Hi, this is Liz. I live a slow and simple life in the countryside of Bavaria, Germany. And during the past couple years, this lifestyle has changed my life for the better. Today, I'm sharing 7 simple living habits I adopted in order to become a better person. But what do I even mean by becoming a better person? It might not be what you expect. We often associate better with more, achieving more, having more, wanting and striving for more. We associate it with being more productive, getting more done. Or maybe we associate being a better person with adhering to certain moral standards, with a certain amount of sacrifice for others or the greater good. But neither is what I mean when I talk about becoming a better you. What I'm talking about is becoming a well-rounded you. Becoming a person that wakes up in the morning, ready to tackle as well as enjoy the day. A person that goes to sleep at night, satisfied after spending a fulfilling day. A person who never wastes precious time, but doesn't rush through life either. A person who achieves what they set their mind to, without necessarily having to adhere to society's standards of achievement. A person that is capable of taking care of their own mental and physical well-being, as well as be kind and supportive towards others. A person who can rest in the calm confidence of knowing that they are living the best life and making the most of every day based on what's important to them, not someone else. Most of us would love to lead this kind of life, but in reality, many of us don't. Some of us might simply not know where and how to start. The good news is, the steps we can take to become this better version of ourselves are surprisingly simple. They are pretty unspectacular everyday habits that have a huge impact in the long run, especially when combined. If you expected some magical spells in this video, I'm sorry to disappoint. Despite my red hair, I hand out simple living advice that absolutely everyone can use in their day-to-day -day lives. Not just witches. Of course everyone's situation is different. These simple living habits do not replace therapy or fix major life problems. However, what I can guarantee is that implementing these habits can only ever improve our situation. They will bring more stability into our lives and offer a way of creating the best possible foundation to live our lives on. The first habit is to take good care of our body. Sounds very simple, right? But when we look closer, there is so much that goes into it and so much that we are often not honest about with ourselves. There is eating a healthy diet, but also eating slowly, taking the time to enjoy the meal as well as give our body time to notice when we are full. There is drinking plenty of water and tea and not so plenty of everything else. Those 8 hours of sleep each night that tend to be only 6 or 7 way too often. There's exercise, especially if we work in a job in which we sit at a desk all day. If you are the type of person to do a full workout once or even several times a week, I applaud you, because I'm not. If that's not realistic for you, for whatever reason, don't force a workout schedule onto your life that you will never stick to anyway. Go for a walk instead, but do that every single day consistently to get some fresh air and move your body. If your muscles are tense, do yourself a favor and get a massage instead of waiting for weeks and making it worse. Take care of your hair, your nails, your skin, your clothes. This is not about being fashionable, this is not about spending a fortune on clothing items or beauty products. It's about the fact that taking care of our appearance makes us feel better on the inside too. As someone who works from home all day every day, I know the temptation of staying in my pajamas all day long. Don't do it, trust me on this. Start each day looking put together, no matter if for you this means just washing your face and brushing your hair, or a full face of makeup. It drastically changes the way you feel and the way you interact with the outside world.
We need to nourish our body and we need to nourish our soul. Taking care of our mind means to give ourselves time to rest, time to watch the clouds in the sky, time to read a book, time to catch up with friends and family, time to do something we enjoy, something that calms us down. We need these times to recharge our batteries. If you are going through a difficult time in your life, talk to someone instead of battling it by yourself. There is nothing wrong with seeking counseling or therapy, be it online or in person. If you want my honest opinion, I strongly believe reflecting on our current life events and getting input from a professional counselor regularly is something everyone would benefit from. Taking care of our mind also means to be honest with ourselves about what we truly want and who we truly are. That can often be tough and it means leaving a very convenient path. But once we stop pretending and start admitting to ourselves what it truly is that makes us happy, we set the foundation for aligning our life with the life we envision for ourselves. A cluttered home and a cluttered mind are reflections of each other. I'm not saying you should become a minimalist. I believe you should be furnishing your home exactly the way you want it. But I am saying that it is crucial for our well-being to maintain a basic level of tidiness. For me, this includes making my bed when I get up in the morning and opening the window to let fresh air in. It means cleaning the dishes right after a meal instead of leaving them there for later. It means putting away every item right after I used it. It means doing a quick tidying up round for about 20 minutes each night and a proper clean each week. Our living space doesn't have to be as sterile as a hospital. It is okay for people to see that somebody lives in this place. This is about creating an environment that doesn't constantly distract us with unnecessary visual clutter or with to-dos that make us feel guilty. It's about making sure we have everything we need, but not necessarily more than we need. It's about creating a space we truly feel well and at home in, and that helps us wind down after a long day. Once we feel well in our own body, our mind and our space, we can start giving ourselves the right opportunities to grow, to develop and to learn. Staying open-minded, developing new skills and broadening our horizon is important. At the same time, it's so easy nowadays to feel pressured to constantly learn something new. I encourage you to follow your own curiosity and develop skills you are truly interested in. Don't force yourself to play the violin or learn Korean if you would much rather knit socks, take care of an aquarium or read about astrophysics. Okay, I might be the only soul out there who loves to read about astrophysics. Focus your time and energy on what you are truly passionate about. If this is something that can help you in your career or create a new stream of income for you, that's fantastic. But if it's something that simply enriches your life without any financial gain, that is perfectly fine as well. Becoming a better version of ourselves starts with ourselves, but it extends to the world around us. No matter whether you have a large friend circle, whether you are close with your family or prefer to spend most of your time by yourself, in the end, it's all about how we treat the people that are important to us. Try to be there for those who need you if you can. Just listening for an hour without interrupting can go a long way when a friend is going through a difficult time. Lending a hand every now and again, doing a favor and being generous is part of every healthy relationship or friendship. Being respectful towards the people in our lives is one of the most valuable mindsets we can develop. No matter if you meet someone every day or only once a year, be fully present whenever you spend time with someone. Put away your phone while having dinner with your family or coffee with friends. 
talk to them instead of being glued to your screen or somewhere else mentally. Don't cancel a meeting last minute and always be on time. The other person took time out of their day for us. Their precious time is not ours to waste. Keep your word if you make a promise and show the people in your life that you deserve their trust. It's very basic habits and principles that make all the difference when it comes to establishing and maintaining healthy relationships. Giving back to our community by volunteering helps others and gives us a feeling of deep fulfillment at the same time. There are countless occasions on which we can experience or enjoy something because others made it possible by volunteering. If volunteering sounds daunting to you, I encourage you to explore options that are fun and well aligned with your skills or that allow you to kill two birds with one stone. I am strongly against killing birds, but you know. If you enjoy cooking or baking, why not contribute to a local event with a few delicious treats? If you are looking for a partner, why not volunteer to check in blood donors and meet dozens of philanthropists in one evening? I personally love LARP and reenactment and own lots of historic costumes. At our historic village fair, I will sell food and drinks dressed up as a medieval farm girl. And I'm having an absolute blast. We can also volunteer without leaving the house. As I work in IT, I volunteer to set up an online booking tool for our local gardening association, so people can book a time slot for pressing juice from their apples. Sometimes things that really aren't a big deal for us can help others a lot. Ultimately, Becoming a better person also includes being a better friend to the planet we live on. By choosing a simpler lifestyle, we often live a more sustainable and environmentally friendly lifestyle as well. Nourishing our body with delicious fresh produce from our own garden or from local farmers is not only healthy but also avoids transport emissions. Buying fewer and high quality clothes instead of fast fashion and opting for second hand whenever possible are simple living habits that are sustainable as well. Making our garden or balcony inviting for insects is so simple but so helpful for the environment. From the food we eat, to the way we shop, to the car we drive or maybe don't drive, there are plenty of options to simplify our day-to-day -day life while living responsibly with regard to our planet's resources. In this day and age, becoming a better person has to include adopting a more sustainable way of living instead of constantly prioritizing only our own comfort and convenience. Establishing these simple living habits in our lives will take some time. The best way to implement them, in my experience, is to turn them into routines that blend into our lives. Making our bed in the morning, calling our grandma each week or volunteering once a month gives us a structure that makes it easy to put our plans into action. What is important to remember though is that you should never overwhelm yourself for the sake of being a better person. There are phases in our lives in which there is just too much going on or in which we lack the energy to tackle all the aspects I mentioned. It is also important to remember that when I talk about becoming a better version of ourselves, this has nothing to do with our value as a person. Better refers to us feeling better about ourselves and the way we spend our time, to making every single day meaningful and beautiful for ourselves and the world around us. Which of these simple living habits have you established? Let me know in the comments.